life and the, the livelihood of sound clash culture by the amount of events that's being held. Because if only 150 or 200 people are in, this, in these events, is it not dead? Come on. If, if we have a month globally, right, that globally, that 10 sound clashes keep, I can gamble with you. I can put money on the table and say to you, yo, I bet you those 10 sound clashes kept across the world and, and collectively 2,000 people didn't attend the 10 of them. Collectively. Wow. Is that not a problem? So we need to stop talking because if we cannot identify the problem, then how do we fix the problem, my bro? And if we never talk about the problem, how can we address and attack the problem that we never talk about? It's the elephant in the room. You cannot tell me that sound clash culture is alive and kicking, uh, Mix Master J, because there's a million flyers on the internet of clashes. Nobody's going. And when I say nobody, I mean we're not even averaging 500 people per sound clash. How does that work? If you want to get a big sound clash in the culture right now, Mix Master J, you got to send for the OGs. You got to go for the old boys in order for you to pull out decent numbers, right? So what that means is that sound clash has not passed the old guys. So does that mean, it doesn't that say something? Yeah. Why is it that you're still looking at the sound systems that bust 30 years ago to ram up a venue? What about the ones that bust five years ago? Why, why they can't ram the venues? I, I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. If it doesn't make yeah, sense, yeah. tell me. So again, my argument is this, bro. If we don't have the conversation, we're never going to get to the, to the source of the problem. There is a problem, right? But in order to admit that there's a problem, the sound systems who are investing all of this money in dub plates, it makes them look stupid. So nobody's going to admit that, oh, yo, you know something? What Chin and Jay is talking about right now is really true. Because admitting that to yourself means that what you're doing is wrong. And nobody wants to do that. So what's going to happen is that ego and selfishness is going to make us continue down a path that somewhere in the future is going to be too late to repair. Am I making sense or I'm making no sense? No, you make sense. I mean, Red Rat, Red Rat has just put on there, like, how about changing the format? And we've discussed that already. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. In, 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 in changing the format. Like is that the Red Rat, Rat the artist? Are. Yeah, yeah. Red Rat's yeah, big up to Red Rat. That's what it is. The format needs to be changed. So you think about this now, right? If there is still a world clash, and world clash is a stage that everybody, you know, thrives to be on as a sound man it's, it's the grammys it's your ultimate um platform as long as world clash exists how are we going to change the format you understand what i'm saying mm. if world clash exists then how do we change the format if we end world clash then possibly with the absence of world clash another format will evolve as Red Rod is asking. So there's also a logical explanation to what I'm doing as well. Because my actions are not only to benefit myself, but to also benefit the arena moving forward. Because again, my brethren, if Sound Clash doesn't live on, then everything that I put into Sound Clash becomes null and void. There's no reason to talk about Kilimanjaro. There's no reason to talk about Base Odyssey because the sport is done. Yeah. There's no reason to talk about Addies. There's no reason to talk about V Rocket and Fat Man and Love Injection and none of these sound systems. The minute that we wake up and we realize blows on skirt, if that thing you're dead enough, the whole of our legacy dies with it, then we'll all collectively fix it. But right now, no one is realizing that if it dies, Jay, 
We die with it. Yeah, we die with it. Yeah, real talk, real talk. If there's no more basketball, why are we talking about LeBron James and Kobe? Why? Why would it make sense? You you get what I'm coming from? Yeah. So it's like we need a lot more thinkers in our culture than talkers. And that's what we have, a bunch of fucking talkers, bro. Real talk. Well, I tell you what, May the 1st, there's so many contenders. I mean, you're the organizer and we have the crownings as well, right? We're not even forgetting about the legends that are gonna be crowned on the night, but just the main, content, the main contenders for World Clash, the end. Who would you say, without being biased, Who's your pick? I don't have a pick, man. I, I don't have a pick. Um, what I would like to happen at World Clash, there's nine sound systems, right? Mm -hmm. I would like to see a real wicked display of talent um, to convince the audience. This is my win. It's nine sounds. I want at least, in a perfect world, I want at least six sounds to really impact that audience so people still have faith in Sound Clash without the base statuses, the Mighty Crown, the Roddy Guns, the Kilimanjaro's, and so on and so on. This is the industry's chance to prove that, listen, we can carry it on. Believe in us because we can give you guys the entertainment that the other guys used to give you. This is the highest stage in the Sound Clash arena, right? This is your opportunity, the nine sounds. They're getting an opportunity, not only for themselves, but for their generation of sound systems. These sound systems represent all of the sounds who never made it to the elite class of sound systems. All of the sounds that we doubted could do it, right? These guys have an opportunity that they can convince the wider public and the promoters all across the world that, yo, invest in us. Shin invested in Bay Odyssey and Mighty Crone and this and that, and they took the industry to this part, right? We are begging you guys now to invest in us because we can take it to another 20 years. This is going to tell the story because if they go out there and flop, people are going to walk out of the O2 Academy and what they're going to say is, yo, any old chin them that have the big man that my clash, this would have been more entertaining. Mm. Right? And then the future of sound clash is going to be written right at that moment. Right? We got to make it make sense. So, I'm not gunning for any particular um, sound system to win. I'm gunning for sound clash to win. We need to get that audio all across the world, letting people know that blows and skirt. Yo, the look of sound them. Me never even know them sound here where Chin could bring come out of the UK, but the man them bad narrated. Yo, them bad. Peer vibes in the dance. That's what we need. We need something to once again get excited about in Sound Clash. When is the last time you got excited in this, about a Sound Clash? Be honest with yourself. Mm. Be honest with yourself, bro. Like, I've gotten the opportunity to work with the Jamrock crew and produce their sound clash, right? And you've seen what I've done with that. And you've seen that level of excitement. And Jay, you've been on that shit because I've seen you on the shit. And you know, as well as I know, that day one, when people walk on that ship, they're already talking about the sound clash. That's going to happen day four. They're enjoying themselves. And guess what? The Junior Gang Clash breaks every traditional rule that we have in Sound Clash. But guess what? People look forward to it. Why? Because they're going to have fun. When is Sound Clash going to become fun again? Yeah. Why do I have to wait to an end of a dance to watch two sound systems play 10 for 10 of Boring songs. That's not connecting. That's making me feel like, yo, why didn't I leave this dance two hours ago? Why do I still have to do that, bro? Why? 
Yeah. Like, how, how is that going to help us move forward? How is Red Rat's son, your son, my son, how are they going to enjoy dub plates from artists that they know nothing about? How? Like, I'm asking all of the necessary questions, bro. <laughs> i just seen a comment, yeah? It says, Song Clash will become fun again when Soul Supreme Clash Mighty Crown. <laughs> again, again, ignorance. Right? So, our culture has come down to depending on two sound systems to clash. Do you, 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 you see where I'm coming from? That comment makes my point. So, our culture has now been degraded to two sound systems clashing. And if those two sound systems don't clash, then the culture will not be fun again. Is that not a problem? Hear that. Hear that. Bro, listen, you and I can talk about this all day, right? And I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I am the most experienced person in the room. And the reason why I would say that I'm the most experienced person in the room, because I've played every field in our culture. I've selected. I've moved box. I've strung up sound system. I've managed sound systems. I've promoted sound systems. I've sat in the dub plate studios and cut some of the biggest dub plates in sound system culture. I've done it all. So I'm speaking from an, an understanding. I'm not guessing what I'm saying. I've traveled the world with Mighty Crown and I understand the sound system culture from every different corner of the world. I understand what it means to keep that excitement and un, you know and anticipation in a sound clash bro and what we're doing right now is not going to help it move forward um and again I, i'm sorry to disappoint who, who, who's looking forward to that but it is what it is bro well i mean at the end of the day yeah some people say you've been talking about on a business level some talking on a vibe level as you said it's only going to be stagnant and stay the same unless there is changes to be had. Sound Clash is a business. It's a business. It's a business. And this is, again, I'm um, sorry to cut you, Jay, but I had to jump yeah. in. Right? It's a business. What people are not understanding about our culture is simply this. Our culture was built, the majority, you know, the, the competitive part of our culture. And let me try to say this as discreet as I can, because I don't want to, offend anyone our culture our competitive culture was mainly built from street money yeah right and the people who were building these colossal sound systems with all of these dubs back in the 90s they were not interested in making money off of the sound systems they were more interested in having bragging rights to say they have jimmy cliff on dub and this on dub and that on dub and Oswald on Dublin, that's what it was. It was never a business, right? So over the years, as the sound system moved forward and evolved, Mixed Master J, the street money has dissolved from our industry, leaving people to now want to emulate what used to happen with nine to five money. That's not going to work, bro. Right? Let's be honest with ourselves. And that's the thing. People are not honest with our culture. In the beginning, the most exciting part of the culture was built off of the man that were in at the street. They had no value for money. It was all about bragging rights. Right? So they spent an astronomical amount of money to compete. We now inherited that, that, that um, culture. And we're saying to ourselves, Yo, we need to forget this stuff. I want you to forget this stuff. I want you to forget this stuff because we want to be just like the sound systems that we grew up on. But we can't afford it. So how do we keep up that trend if we don't have the street money? Because let's be honest, man, I use their mortgage money by dub. Man, <laughs> man or three months, man or three months by them child note because they want a new skilly bang. Let's be honest. Man, Pitney can't go to school because they spend all of their money on dub plates. 
So how much longer can we sustain such behavior? How much longer can we, you know, allow artists to make us feel like, why well, I may have to pay that fifteen hundred dollar yeah, because if me can't play it, I want one of them money, then people are gonna send me on a bad song. How long do you do it? Yeah. For real. For real. And again, I know the conversation is heavy, but when I get on these platforms, I try to just give you guys an understanding because a lot of you misunderstand who I am, what I represent, and why I do what I do. Everything that I do is for the benefit of the culture. Not everything works out as I intended because we're, we, we, we're open to human error. But the greatest thing about me that you guys should know is that everything that I do has a good intention for the culture. And nine out of ten times, it works. But people depend on that one time that it doesn't work to say, yo, a chin, a chin. Now, let me, let me end by saying this. I created a format that lasts two decades and propels sound system culture from where it was to where it is now. You're going to tell me I don't know what I'm doing? If I, don't, if I didn't know what I'm doing, then why, why wasn't the formula changed a long time ago? If my way didn't work, why didn't the industry recreate another formula and push Chin out of the business a long time ago? Why is there not other promoters in Sound Clash? You want me to tell you why? Because there's no money. Right? Investors go where money can be made. The reason why there's Chin and maybe one and two other people only keeping Sound Clash is because when you keep a Sound Clash, the chances of you breaking even is slim to none. So when a man take him look at nine to five money or him, him, him savings or wherever am I getting money from and him dump it and I want some clash and feel say I'm going to flip the money and then the money lose, what do you think happens? They don't come back to do another clash. How can we thrive in our industry if we don't have promoters? We're supposed to have, you know, if there's a hundred sound man, then we're supposed to have 25 promoters. Does that, doesn't that make sense? There, has, there should be a fraction of... Yeah, it should be fraction. There should be a ratio. Definitely. Definitely. Now, you go into your memory later on and you say to yourself, boy, let me see if we can name 20, 20 recognized sound clash promoters. You're probably not even going to be able to name five. Struggle for make five. So if we don't have five recognized Sound Clash promoters, how do we have an industry? The sound man them can't promote Sound Clash. They can't even get along with each other. How are they going to promote clashes? Real talk. Well, so I'll tell you what. In, in this conversation with you, I've just identified maybe 15 things that's wrong with, with, with the path that we're going down. But again, people, Sunday, 1st of May, O2 Academy, uh, final World Clash, the end. I'm really, really excited about it. There's been so much people in the UK that used to fly. You know, I, I tell these stories because they're true. Um, back in the early days of World Clash, I used to see people come with their suitcases to the, to the venues because they were coming from Europe and from England off the plane, JFK straight to Amazura, and we would have to you do like a luggage check for them, you know? Check your <laughs> luggage and put, it in, yeah, and put it in a room, you know? Wow. Um, yeah, so that's how, you know, that's where the culture is coming from, right? So with that being said, um, there was only two places that I, I really wanted to do World Clash before it ended, was Japan and the UK, you know? Um, and we decided to do the UK. And I'm excited about that because the UK has been supporting World Clash from day one. Day one. Um, I'm excited about that because I know the energy from the UK Cup clashes and just the clashes there. Um, UK has, and we don't talk about it on this side of the Atlantic because we, we're selfish and, you know, we tend to feel like America is the biggest thing in the world, right? But 
UK has an extremely rich sound system culture, just like America. You know what I mean? And it's depthy. And the UK should be credited for a lot of things that the UK doesn't get credited for. So when I thought about, you know, ending World Clash, it was like, yes, let's take it to the UK, some place that, you know, really, you know, harnesses the culture. Um, so O2 Academy, I'm looking forward for it. Um, nine sound systems on one stage. It's going to be crazy. Um, and this is going to be meaningful because these sound systems, one of them will get the right to say, I was the winner of the last world title. And that's going to be really unique. That's, that's, you know that's I mean? real unique. That is, you yeah. know, when you're, leaving, when you're leaving the venue with that the trophy, boy, you're going to sleep with it. You're going to take it in your car. You're going to go everywhere with that trophy there. I, I, and you know what makes this trophy better than any other trophy? You don't have to defend it. <laughs> you don't. Every every other winner, every other winner before this winner had to come back and defend I can't that. Defend title. it. Yeah, true. Right. No more defending. This, this winner doesn't have to defend it. It's it. It can't be changed. I'm the last world champion. It's done. Right? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to see who does that. I'm also looking forward to um saying thank you to what I call the world class superstars. The people who help to make the world class brand synonymous across the world. You know, um, the uh Ricky Troopers, the Tony Matarans, the uh the Black Caps, the Base Addisons, um, the Mighty Crown, the David Radigan, you know, these are the brethren who um they're not the only ones that competed in World Clash, but they are the ones that became the stars of that world class brand, you know. Um, and, and, and this is our way to say thank you. And I think that it's only right to close the curtains with them in attendance. Of course. Because actually, actually, this is their stage. They built this stage. I provided the stage, but they built this stage. You know what I mean? So it, it's gonna, it's a lot of things happening on the one roof on Sunday, May 1st. Um, I, I apologize if I spoke too much and I was too winded. No, man. It's, 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 it's real talk. And as you said, it's got to make sense. It's got yeah. to make sense. So it's, it's very necessary. I've been educated with stuff that I didn't know personally about yourself. And, um, you know, the business side of things. I mean, I know business and I have sense. But as you said, it has to make sense and things need to evolve. It's like basically saying it's only our age group, 40 plus, that are going to these dances. We need the young people to be in there. So whether the format changes, whether there's different rules, a hip hop round, a Afrobeat, whatever it is that can make it evolve, then let it make sense. You know what I mean? Let it make sense. Let, let, it, make let sense. it make sense. I am looking forward to actually speak to you again on the night backstage. I said to you, all right, we didn't have the reasoning you know. So what you say then? Did it succeed? Or did it not succeed? And I'm going to say to you in advance, the only way that it will succeed for the industry is if people leave World Clash saying, I enjoyed this dance. Yeah. That's the only way. And, and I, you know, if they leave talking about Mighty Crone and David Radigan, that's not good. It's not good. It's not good. That's not good. It's not good. You know what I mean? They, they, they need to leave this event saying, yo, the sound them chore down, you know? Um, I didn't know these because let's face it, a lot of the people who's coming to World Clash, they don't even know who some of these sound systems are. Real you know, the tickets are selling um, because World Clash is coming to England and people know what the World Clash brand is. But we're not going to use that as a deterrent. I'm glad that people are still buying the tickets. All I want now is the sound systems to come on board and say, this is why... You need to have faith in us because we're just as good as the, the ones before us. And we are the ones that's going to entertain you for the next 20 years, bro. So, um, you know, big up to everybody on the live. Again, I apologize for talking so long. And I know I took the conversation there, so and there, so and there. So no, but man, it, it's, it's real. It's what you call real reasoning. <laughs> so before, yeah. you, before you leave, I needed to hear this. I'm sure you remember this, eh? You're officially tuned in to Irish Chin.com. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> remember saying, oh, me is part of the Rewind Sunday team. It's just true, true, certain uncertainty why I am not there. You understand? <laughs> yes, but 
I spoke to Shinehead, man, and he told me that you're coming back. So I guess when we get to the UK, we'll have some conversation on, on, on that situation. And yeah, we have to talk about that. And talk, yeah, and, talk, and, and talk about the fact that the cruise is, is sailing this year. And, and to make the, make the cruise exciting, if you draw for a different Englishman like me for day and night, that if you do. The, the, the cruise is sailing this year. Um, the sound clash element of it ha, you know, hasn't been uh, put together this year yet. But um, listen, I'm looking forward, Jan. And if you, you are the person... You know, you're the person. You know, it's just listen. My thing is all about fun. I want to leave the sound flashing. And I don't know how it was in in the UK, but I know here in New York, we would spend five, four hours in a sound clash, right? And then after the sound clash is done, we used to spend like another two hours on the sidewalk arguing with each other, <laughs> right? That's the good old days, right? Yeah. Who won? Who lost? why they won, who, why they lost, or whatever, right? And we need that energy to happen again. We need to leave these events so thrilled and so exciting that we feel like we can take on the world because oh, our son just win. You know what I mean? So that's where we are with it, man. Big up to everybody on the live. Once again, um, I always use these opportunities to get some different narratives out there. So excuse me if I didn't stay on topic. But you know me, my love chat, and um, <laughs> I really, really love this culture. I, I've dedicated so much years to it that, you know, I really want to give you guys a different way of thinking. Even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, I want you to hear what I'm saying because maybe it can give you a different narrative on what's happening, you know, in the space. So give that. No, I, I want to say thank you for taking the time out, Jermaine, you know mean, to, to bless... To bless my show um it's a start big up lady vv rocket cell it's a start for this month leading into world clash that i'm going to have some of the contenders on the show um leading up to world clash so you as a ceo it's the perfect start next week we don't know who going to go there or maybe panta maybe mataran maybe warrior <laughs> Maybe the Japanese song, maybe maybe Stereo Five. I don't know, but we're gonna have this conversation with the contenders and and and, and level it up right up until May the first. You know what I mean? I, so may it long I may wanna, it continue. I want everyone to look, and I, I want to say this before I go. I want you, Miss Master J. I want everybody who's in the culture to start looking at this as a business, right? You guys saw what happened with the Grammys. Right? And you see everybody cussing and, you know, and it's because we ain't doing our thing the right way. Everyone else is structuring their thing. It, and this is not about who's better, right? Um, because there's nobody better than us. We are the best because this is ours, right? However, we are losing because we are not structured and other people who love the music, and again, it's not a racial thing because I believe black, white, Chinese, Japanese, blue, green, if you come into the culture and you take the necessary steps in the culture to authenticize yourself, if there's such a word, um, I got to respect that. You know what I mean? But the difference is that other cultures come in and not only do they start from the grassroots, but every step of the way, they're structuring their thing as a business, right? And when they structure their thing as a business, ultimately, somewhere down the road, there's some big reward for, for them. And then we look at it and we're like, what the hell? How did you get that? You don't deserve that. Me not a business for such and such time. I'm going to kill this song. I'm going to make this hit record. And a lot of it is because we're lacking to structure our thing as a business. It's happening with the artists, with the Grammys, and if you look at the sound system culture, it's the same exact thing. And I want to tell you, I had this discussion on the live. It went on for two hours. I had Mikey General, Bling Dog, uh, Edley Shine, uh, uh, Kirk Diamond from Canada, Deadly, Deadly Ranks, and we were talking about it. And everybody said the same thing, structure. It's not about color. It's about what we do to help ourselves 
and structure. Yeah? So, soldier, I've been putting in the work for over nearly 20 years. They've been nominated three times. I play their music. Was it the right choice that won? Hey, I can only say I knew I know the albums that were out there, Sean Paul, Spice, Jesse Royal, Gramps, Itana, but the powers that be due to their structure, due to their streaming, due to their sales, whatever it is, they had the right structure, they won. Rightly or wrongly, there's nothing we can do about that unless we go away and look at ourselves and know how to put together our team. And you, and you know the crazy thing about it? We're not going to learn from it. You know, this will continue happening. We're just going to cuss them and say them white and them rob the thing, them a culture vulture. That's what we do. Um, I've seen it with David Radigan. I lived it with Mighty Crown. I, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a repetitive action of us, you know. Um, Crown is retiring. And, you know, they're retiring on a level that most sound systems will never see in their life, right? They're not connected to street culture in any way if you get where I'm coming from. Yeah. This is all business. It's all business, you know, meaning that they've been able to set them thing the way they need to set them thing in order for now say, yo, I've been doing this for 30 years. You know what I mean? I, I no longer know. Want to, yeah, I don't want to stand up around a sound system and 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 um you know you know do what everybody else does anymore. Um is it is it betraying the culture? It's only betraying the culture to those who are so used to us seeing our selectors play until they're too old to play again. You feel me? You know what I mean? But if you look at other genres of music and other, you know, like hip hop and stuff, those DJs, after a while, they come out of the parties and they come out of the, the you know, the clubs and, and they go turn big super producers. Khaled for a big example, you know what I mean? Um, so are they wrong for looking at other genres and seeing what really works and using that format to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do? Or are we wrong for thinking that we should just do the same thing for the rest of our lives you know what i mean so yeah. again structure people look at the thing as a business um and looking at it as a business you know just look at it this way and i'll leave you guys with this right many of you would say that i've done a lot for sound system culture i've invested years in sound system culture and i would say to you guys that a lot of what I achieved is because of Mighty Crown. And now I'm not saying that I achieved it because I'm Mighty Crown's manager. I'm not saying that I achieved it because Mighty Crown invested in my company. I achieved it because in 2000, which is a year after they won World Clash, I went to Japan. And I realized by seeing that their business structure that I was doing the thing totally wrong. Bro. Have I not became their manager and have I not went to Japan, I would have been doing what every other promoter has been doing, running the business out of their back pocket on a cell phone. I wouldn't have known. I went to Japan and I was embarrassed to know that these brethrens won my sound clash and they have a business that's bigger than my business. You know what I mean? So I realized that, listen, if they could do it, I can do it too. So I came back to America and I set up my business and the rest of it is history. history. I'm saying this to those of you because I think that instead of us always drawing the Japanese card or the white card, we might say, Rati, that that you not do with our music? Yo, let me go home and I set up my thing too. Yeah, I eat a food too. You know what I mean? Um, and this is the last thing I promise, and I want you guys to, to I want you guys to to, to 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 dwell on this. David Radigan came out with a book, right? And he also went on television in in um in the UK. It turned the industry upside down because many of us interpret him as interpreted 
the interview as David saying that he's the godfather of dancehall, right? He comes out with a book and we all cuss and who we think he is and blah, 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 right? Since those occurrences and all of the uproars that, that happen as a result of that occurrence, I'm just showing you our culture that all we do is this, right? How many acclaimed people from our culture that are the real pioneers of the culture, the real godfathers of the culture, how many of them drop the book? How many of them decide that since David is out there telling his story and people are feeling like he's the pioneer, let me hire somebody to my, my story and put my story out there to counteract the narrative. How many of us did it? Nobody wants to do the work. Everybody just wants to chat. You, 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 you follow what I'm saying? Where, yeah. and, and, and I'm, I'm not dissing anyone. I'm just showing you the culture. Where's the Saxon book? Right? Where's the Coxon book? Right? Where is the, the, the downbeat book? Where's the Addie's book? Where's the Stone Love book? Where, where are these, these things that say, yo, don't think about, don't, if you're thinking that Radigan started this thing, you're wrong. Where's the Jashaka book? And, and, and the list goes on, bro. So again, the problem is not the people who are coming into our culture. The problem is us. In our culture. In our culture. And I'm just going to leave it at that, my brother. Big leave up. it leave, leave it at that. Brother, salute. History make today again. I look forward to seeing you when you arrive in the UK. And we, 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 we'll talk again when we're there at World Clash the end. You hear me? But all I can say is, once again, thank you for taking the time out to all this great reasoning. Talk about sound system culture. It's been a pleasure, my brother. Manners and respect you. Thank you, man. <laughs> Salute, people. I'll be back in the...